you are the demand side of the system. The airlines and the aviation sector is the supply side of the system. So, ministry as a whole wants to address both the demand side as well as the supply side. And the ultimate objective for each and every endeavor is for accessibility, affordability and equity. So that the uh, scheme that you have recently seen to be launched by the government of India, that is the Uran, that is an uh, apt acronym, that is Ude Desh Ka Aam Nagrik. That is basically we want to have even a Hawaii chapel wearing person move in the airplane. So that's the ultimate objective. But that's not to say that only the uh, uh, lower end uh, traffic is the objective to be catered to. We are also into en enhancing and augmenting the capacity for international travel, hinterland travel, as well as the in intercity me metro metropolis travel. That takes care of the business travel as well as ecotourism and various other types of tourism that we all are envisaging. So to enable that, what we are env uh, planning and we have already come out with few of these schemes and as you would be aware, that the cost of operation of airports has to go down. As one of our colleagues has just stated, uh, international uh, instances he has quoted where very low cost airports have been functioning. To do that, we have come out with few of the schemes where the cost of navigation, cost of runway, cost of security, cost of terminal buildings, cost of manpower that is deployed reduces. And for that, we have been working with the state governments and other uh, uh, stakeholders so that these airports and other ad adjacent infrastructure gets developed at a much lower cost. Ultimately, that gets transferred to the passenger. And if that is cost effective, then obviously the traffic will grow. The other aspect that people just quoted was about promotion of airports like Hyderabad. One in one of the previous sessions, people were, had quoted about Hyderabad, Bangalore and big size airports so that you can actually get in jumbo aircrafts which take, uh, bring in uh, 500 or 400 passengers from abroad. That is also part of the uh, uh, vision of our, uh, the government so that where you get large scale airports which can cater to Airbus 300 and Boeing 787 and uh, 777 and not just the ATRs and the Bo Airbus 320 which are just 100 and 150 seater aircraft. So we are looking at both, uh, both ends of the spectrum. We hope to cater to the airlines requirement as well so that the maintenance and the operating requirement of the airline also goes down because they are not just dependent upon the airport, they are also dependent upon their other suppliers which provide them maintenance inputs, fuel, etc. And if, as you are all aware, fuel is one of the most important cost component for the airline's operations, ATF. So we have been urging the state governments to be able to reduce the tax and other inputs that go into the cost of the ATF. If that goes down, the airline ticket cost goes down and ultimately that benefits all of us as citizens as well as the tourism industry. So all in all, I would just like to say that in this current policy framework of the government of India, the role of the state governments has been increased many folds. As you would be aware in the re latest regional connectivity scheme or Uran that you have said, it's like a cooperative federalism or a more apt would be competitive federalism. The government of India is not deciding or directing any airline to uh, choose a route. The market dynamics, we are just promoting and we are just facilitating and creating the basic framework on which the system should operate. The airline is the ultimate king. They can assess the market, the demand, the supply and they can bid for the routes as well as the networks. I would put, like to put it in a different perspective. As you have already stated in one of the previous sessions, the international traffic is dependent and is bound by the bilateral agreements. And one of the speakers had also mentioned that the, uh, the agreements get signed and then they wither away with no actual effect and benefit on the ground. In fact, we have also seen that in many of these, uh, many of the instances where the bilateral seats are, say, for example, just to a ballpark figure, 
say 10,000, the international carrier would have utilized, say, 9,900 seats. The Indian carriers may not have utilized that much. So, uh, may, they may have been short, say, maybe 4,000. That's just an uh, illustrative example. So, basically, we want to promote Indian carriers so that they are able to take full utilization and benefit of the bilateral rights. And as it is a part of the negotiation process, we can go in for enhancement in the seats with the negotiations with the host country. That is always possible and we are always willing to do that. The only thing is that the airline, the domestic carrier should not be at a disadvantage as compared to the international carrier in terms of the negotiations. But ultimately, even uh, the, uh, if a decision is to be taken, then ultimate decision is of that of the benefit of the consumer. The, not even the airports, not the airline. It is the ultimate citizen of the country which should get benefited.